it's um if people come in a little late that's fine too yep all right uh let me share my screen you don't really need to look at me but hi everybody and thank you so much for uh joining us for friendly perspective it is friendly i promise um can you all see my screen? Yep. Is it showing up? Great. Yes. OK. So um, my name is Jessica Pryor. I am an artist here in New York City. Um, I've been hanging out with Leah and friends for a couple of years now because they saw uh, somebody had a French easel outside of the cafeteria at work. And I said, I need to know these people. Um, and so. Um, I did, and now I do. And so we're going to talk today about perspective. Um, and it is friendly. I don't want you to feel that this is something that you cannot learn because you can. This is something that's accessible to everybody. Um, however, so there is a old classic book called Perspective for Artists. Um, it's from 1921. And the very first line in this book is in our art school days, we looked upon perspective with grave suspicion. So that will tell you how people feel about it from generations and generations. And another one, I have known students to attend a course of well-delivered lectures on perspective, yet say they did not understand a single word of what the lecturer was talking about. Um, final note on this slide, do not buy this book. It will make you cry. Just, just don't. Um, I will have resources for you. You don't even, I mean, you can take notes, but you don't have to. Everything that I'm going to show you on the deck, I'm going to send it to Leah so she can send it out to all of you, but this book will make you cry. So don't, don't buy it. Um, and at the end, hopefully, you know, you will be able to analyze basic working perspective in an image or in a scene from life. And we're also going to do a little bit of like really uh, specific problem solving with dealing with ellipses, because that ties into some of the things that Leah has been and you have been working with uh, very recently in class. Um, I just want to say a really quick note. The images in the deck that I'm going to be showing you, they come from this book. It's called Perspective Made Easy by Ernst Norling. It's originally published in 1939. It is still in print and you should get a copy of this book. It's wonderful. It will not make you cry. Um, and it's just a really good reference to have around. I mean, you might read through it once just to know like what information is there and where to go, but I still refer back to this book when I need to do some problem solving. If, if I have um, a perspective problem that I just, I just need to like wrap my head around how to deal with it, I will go to this book. It's wonderful. It's very accessible language. It's easy to read. It's very conversational. Uh, and I do recommend um, that you have a copy of this book in your library. And it's also really cheap. You should be able to get it for, I don't even know, like definitely under $15, probably even cheaper than that. Uh, just look for it on Amazon. And um, there's another book you should get as well. Uh, it's called How to Draw Comics the Marvel Way. This is a classic. And it is on, if you, if you do a survey of professional artists and teachers, uh, and you say, like, what are your top three drawing books? This one is probably going to be number one on a, very, on a very large population of people giving you that list. Um, even if you're not into comic books, which I am not, I don't care about them. Um, this book breaks down absolutely everything that you need to know about drawing in general in a very accessible way because it's written for a somewhat younger audience or it's meant to be accessible to people of all ages. I would say from tweens and up, maybe, maybe even elementary school, maybe a little like middle school and up. But anyhow, it's just like brilliant. It's a brilliant book. It will go through all of your basics and the chapter on perspective, which is very short, but it tells you everything you need to know really just to get working knowledge of it. It's a fantastic book. I do recommend it. Everybody should, who is like seriously studying art and drawing should get a copy of this book, even if you don't care about comic books. Um, and I have, I'll, Again, this is all in the deck at the end, so you don't have to write anything down if you don't want. 
Um, so I want to ask you all, when is perspective most important? Do you think it's in landscape, figures in portrait, or still life? So you can unmute and just call out your answers if you have Architecture. Any. Okay, architecture is a good so one. So like um, urban landscapes. Yep, yep. Okay, where else is it most important? It's like all of the above. <laughs> Yes, that is exactly correct. Absolutely. Yeah. Okay. <laughs> That's what there is no time in which perspective is not important. Now, Leah often says correctly that the things that you're learning in art class, it's a language. It's a language of visual arts. And that is true. Perspective is your grammar structure. It's the whole structure of if you're doing representational art and even non-representational art, if you want things to go back into space on a 2D surface into 3D illusion, you need to know perspective. And it is the structure of how all of that works. Okay. Do we have any questions so far? All right. Great. So there are a few types of perspectives. We're not going to go into very much detail. This is really an introduction starting point class. It's more to tell you, hey, this exists. And if you want to know more, go learn more. Um, so the first type of perspective, which is actually mostly what we're going to be dealing with today, is one point perspective. There is one vanishing point. Lines are either vertical, horizontal, or they recede towards the vanishing point. And you can see uh, in the illustration here, everything is converging towards one vanishing point, but all horizontals stay exactly horizontal. Now, the next one, which is possibly <clears throat> like the most common, if you're doing anything with interiors, anything at an angle um, is two point perspective. And this is the one that tends to trip people up the most because aside from one point perspective, this is the one you'll see the most. It's the one that you walk around in everyday life with the most. Uh, and it's a little bit more sophisticated. Um, so there are two vanishing points and most of the time they are off of your picture plane. They have to be wide apart. If they're too close together, it's very distorted and it's incorrect. Um, so lines are either vertical or they recede towards one of two vanishing points. So I know the picture is a little bit crooked, but you can see the horizon line and you can see all of the horizontals are, are going towards one of two points. And those points are not on the picture. You cannot see them on the picture. Um, and so then- can, So can you guys see the arrows that are going in different direction that are going, so all the arrows that are going this direction, that's one vanishing point and all the arrows that are going this oh, right. Thank yeah. you. right there yeah, yeah. that's Thanks what i just that. want you so that just shows you that like everything that's going this direction is going to one vanishing point and if you continued your drawing you can see that they're not parallel they are right they're all going towards one they're going towards one on point. one side and another point on the other side of the picture so that's two point perspective. We're not really gonna be talking about two point perspective today, but you should understand it as a concept. You should know that it exists. Um, and that's, that's just as much as we're gonna get into with two point today. Uh, there's something else called three point perspective. Again, this is just for your knowledge that this is a thing that exists. Three point perspective, there are three vanishing points and all of the lines in your drawing will recede towards one of three vanishing points. This is a special use only in general where you're looking really far up at something or you're looking really far down at something. So you can see in our illustration, um, it's used often in cityscapes or things where, where there's something either really high up from, from your eye level or really far down. It is a special use only. You don't really need to worry about it. Um, just know that it exists. If you find an image that is a situation that oh, I don't know how to deal with this. I know it's not one point. It doesn't seem like it's two point. Then it's probably three point, but you probably won't encounter this very much. Are there any questions about the three types of perspective? So I just want to say, again, I'm not going to get into very much detail here. It's mostly just important that you know that this is a thing that exists. Photography presents 
challenges as far as perspective and working with images because of lens distortion. And the lens distortion is really significant. So if you don't understand how perspective works or, and I'm, I'm very biased towards working from life. It's my training, it's what I do. Um, it is just, I'm very biased towards working from life. If you don't have that foundation in working from life and the practice in working from life, and you're only copying photos and you don't know the difference, um, your, your images are gonna look distorted. And it, the average person who doesn't know any better they will probably say, hey, that's great. But if you show it to another artist, they're gonna tell immediately you don't know what you're doing. And sorry to be blunt about that, but that's just the truth. So if you know how perspective works, you're gonna be able to correct it. There are special circumstances in which cameras distort um, faces is a very good example of that. I took, a class, I don't know if you can even call it a class. It was a thing I did um, a year ago in January, just to like do like this new year's, you know, move artistically. There's a website, I don't, I don't mean to like, you know, speak, you know, poorly about anything, but there's a website called Sketchy and they had this thing called 30 Faces in 30 Days. Yeah. And I signed up for it just to, cause I'm like, well, let me just practice, it's fun. Out of the 30 days, there was one photo reference I thought was decent. And they were just either bad images or the lens distortion on them was so bad that it was like, why would anybody even do this? And that site is not a professional photographer site. It's people who just take pictures of themselves however they want and they upload it. But a lot of people are using that for reference, for learning. Right. And my point being on it is that that's not a good way to learn. Hey, because, Jessica, can yeah. I ask a question about that? Yeah, sure. I had noticed recently that particularly with cell phones that the yeah. faces tend to be elongated. Mm -hmm. like, and, I, and so I'm noticing a lot now that you're saying it, people who use the sketchy app tend to draw a, a longer, actually more exaggerated. They're, they're wrong, their getting... drawings are wrong. Their drawings I'm telling are just you wrong. right now their drawings are wrong. And the reason their drawings are wrong is because they're copying lens distortion. Right. And right. That's, yeah. And it's not that they're not great artists. And there's one in particular, and I'm not going to say their name. And I was talking about this with my friend because I'm like, their work is like, as far as like technical ability, their work is good, but there's something like very uninteresting about all of their portraits. And I was looking at them with my friend. I'm like, what is it about this? Because this person can draw, but their work does nothing for me. Why, why is that? And we both like realized it's because they're only working from photographs and they're just copying photographs that other people took that may or may not be correct. And there's right. no real so lens distortion is not artistic interpretation. I want to be really clear about that. So um, I was going to say, I yeah. come across this problem a lot when I take pictures of cats or animals, you know, because I want to, mm -hmm. I want to take them up close, but the iPhone really distorts because it's got a wide lens, a wide That's, lens. Yeah. Mm -hmm. So one of the ways of getting away from it is to take a picture from further away and then crop it. Yes, and then you get a lot another less way distortion. that you can do it as well. There's another way you can do it as well. It requires a little bit of setup, but the way that is foolproof to avoid lens distortion is take the picture as a reflection in a mirror. Oh. Mm, that's very difficult to stage for it's with animals. <laughs> yeah, I'd say impossible for animals, perhaps. Right. So um, for some things, I wouldn't actually necessarily worry about it. Um, I am not a gearhead photographer, and I never will be. It's not my medium. It's not what I'm interested in. I know that a lot of people who do their own photo reference, like Kevin Wistie, he's got like this professional photography set up and he's got a prime lens, which will cause the least amount of distortion. And he runs it through Lightroom. I mean, you, you could learn that if that's your inclination. Um, 
I think the best way if you're starting out is if you're going to do your own reference, do it in a mirror or, you know, do it from not so close up and crop it like Sandra was saying. That's a very good solution. Um, and it will be good enough. It will be fine. Um, or, um, you know, we're, we're painters, right? I know some of you may be into photography in your lives, you know, separate from painting, but we're talking about painting and drawing right now. And that's our medium. Photography is not our medium. Um, so actually this comes to my next. So uh, it, it's my life philosophy in general is to be a good enoughist. Be a good enoughist. We're gonna, we're gonna learn this to be good enough. You don't have to be an expert. Perfectionism doesn't exist but being accurate does. Um, so our medium is paint. If you have a problem with perspective or a painting problem, don't look to photography to fix it. Photography is not gonna fix it. Um, painting does not have a goal of being like a photograph. That's, and I'm not gonna go on my rant here because this is something I'm nuts about. Um, I will just say, you know, if you, because uh, everybody says, you know, if, if, you know, you do something and it's a good painting, people love to say, oh, it looks like a photograph. Please don't say that to your fellow artists, because that's not what people are trying to do. Photography and painting have a slight overlap in some areas, but they're completely different mediums. They have different goals. Painting does things that photography will never, ever be able to do. So instead of saying, oh, it looks like a photograph, why not rephrase it and say, hey, that's really beautiful. It looks so lifelike because photography does not necessarily imitate life. It doesn't. It is a filter. It's a machine. I'm not saying it's, it's an art form in itself, but it's not painting. And photography came after painting. So if you have a problem in either a perspective issue, a composition issue, and anything issue with painting, look at paintings to solve it, not photographs. Um, and that is my biggest piece of advice to you other than work from life is photographs, The ref everybody uses photo reference. There's nothing wrong with it, but you have to understand it in a painting context. You have to understand its limitations. You have to understand its distortions. And you know, if you have an issue, look to painting. Oh my gosh, old master paintings will tell you everything you need to know. Um, so once you understand the basics and you know about lens distortion and you know how perspective works, you can make corrections to your photographs and then you can apply what you know to if there's an issue in your reference, you can apply what you know and fix it and your painting will look good. I know that was a lot. Um, any questions, thoughts, comments? Leah left. I think we should wait for her to come back. Leah, can you hear us? Are you still there? She's on mute as well. Yeah. All right. Well, um, she'll come back. So when you are working with any image or working from life, it doesn't matter. This applies to everything. The first thing that you want to do is establish the eye level. And if you're working from life, that's really going to be your eye level relative to your, um, your subject. If you are, and if usually for photo reference too, because your reference is right there. If you're doing like something from imagination, you need to establish the eye level, the viewer's eye level. So you would work from there as well. But no matter if you're working from imagination, you're working from life, you're working from photo reference, you must establish the eye level. It is the most important thing that everything is based on. The horizon line is always the eye level. That is a hard and fast rule. It is, um, it is like a non-negotiable law of art. The horizon line is always the eye level. And when you walk around in your daily lives, um, you can see it, look for it. Especially if you see a building, like a brick building, look for where the lines of the brick, oh, um, hi Leah, welcome back. Look for where the lines of the brick are exactly straight and that's your eye level. If you're walking 
um, on the street with somebody who's a little taller than you, their eye level is going to be different. A different line of bricks will be a different straight for them because their eye level is higher maybe than yours. Well, definitely for me, because I'm really short. So everyone's taller than me. So my eye level is always lower, but that's one like really great way to look at it. And if you're walking, you know, down the street and you see buildings, look for where the eye level is like practice this in real life. You will be amazed at how you automatically start analyzing perspective in your daily environment. Um, so I really would encourage you to do that, to just observe in your daily life, just find the eye level. And then when you start um, your painting or your drawing, put your horizon in very first, because then you always have a starting point to come back to if you get lost or you're not sure where something is relative to something else. So you always wanna ask, where is my viewpoint relative to the horizon? Am I looking up at something? Am I looking down or am I looking at it straight on? Any questions about horizon lines and eye levels? So when we are, um, we are trying to make something that is much taller than us, like I see that you make a lot of um, like, you know, bigger buildings. You draw a lot of bigger buildings on location. How do you do that? Because you I will get to that. We are gonna talk about that um, in just a minute. So hold the question. And then I will come back to you, Rashmi, and see okay. if after I describe something, um, you're, you're almost where we're going. So just hold that, okay? And if you still need clarity, then I will we'll go into it further, okay? Okay, so let's look right now at some examples of how to find the eye level. So let me stop sharing uh, the deck. And I'm also gonna show you a really easy way to incorporate perspective into your landscapes in particular for landscape. Okay. Uh, I need to share my screen again. All right. All right, can everybody see Photoshop? Yes. Okay, great. So I am gonna show you some examples and we're gonna play around a little bit with finding, um, finding the eye level and finding the horizon. Uh, just a little quick note, I'm using my own paintings only for one reason, not necessarily because they're the best examples or they're, you know, super fabulous, but the only reason that I'm, I'm doing it is because I can take you through my thought process. And that's really what I want to show you is my thought process and hopefully you can learn from it and maybe it will be easy for you to um, apply it in your own paintings. I can... I could show you, you know, all day how to analyze perspective in any image, but I can't take you through somebody else's thought process. So and I just want to point out that Jessica, is, this is St. Patrick's Church, yeah. uh, which Cedral. Jessica in New York, mm -hmm. right, which Jessica is often at painting and she did this drawing last Friday. No, this one's from, I don't know. February sometime. February. Anyway, also. she's often here working when we're having class. Yeah, some of these, actually a lot of the paintings that I'm going to show you are paintings that have been done during Leah's class, either in full or partially. So, um, so let's talk about the cathedral. This was painted from life. Um, I sit in the cathedral and paint. It's pretty awesome, actually. And it's also um, a perspective challenge and it's visually like crazy in there. So um, the first thing that I do is establish where is my eye level? So does anybody want to take a guess where it might be in this painting? So I'm Near looking at it and if I were to guess it, I, I'm trying to figure this out because it looks like it's really high up like around where the arch begins, because that's the first line I see that's- Where is my open. eye level? Where are my eyes in physical- Your eyes are below there. Yeah, your well, eyes are- <laughs> I'm guessing, I'm gonna make a guess. Yeah. Um, is it where that, the sort of, uh, the straight line, where the yes. sort of above the, um, sort of in the bottom right third? I'm gonna give you all a hint. I, there are I would lines. say it's the lower line under yeah. that. that Leah Sandra's said. correct. It's, it's, it's right very there. bottom. Yeah. Right wow. There. Yep. You're right. You're right. I see it now. Okay. It now? There are no straight lines. You see? Do you do you see my mouse cursor? 
Yes. Yeah. Okay. You see, that's converging down there. This one's converging here. So this is two point perspective. Um, I did not determine and measure out where are my vanishing points. I did the old artist trick of establishing my, what the heck is my pencil? Um, establishing where is my eye level, which is down here. And then, you know, you hold up your pencil and you measure the angles. And you just plunk them up. Okay, you can see this in my fingers. Pencil. This is the best measuring tool you'll ever have is your pencil. Right. I agree. So hold it up, do your angles. All professional. Keep your arm you straight. Yeah, Don't, you keep you your can't arm bend straight. it. You can't bend it. Right. You have to keep it straight as you're checking. Keep your arm straight. Well, I'm bending it just for, um, right. yeah, that's true. You don't bend your arm. You hold your arm out straight and you just measure. You measure your angle. You measure your angle. I know where it is in my head relative. I know where my viewpoint is. So I know, okay. like, for example, this line isn't going to be going up. So I know how to analyze it. I know what to look for. I know everything on this side of the wall is going to be slanting somewhere there. I know everything on this side of the wall is going to be going this way. Yep. Am I saying the perspective in this is perfect? No, it's probably not. It's probably off a little bit in some areas, but does it matter? No, because it's good enough to work. It's good enough to be convincing. You know that this is a corner of the building and you know that this arch is really high up. Uh, does everybody get how the eye level horizon line plays into this that like as you have a turn so at the center here jessica can you point at the center of your where the two walls meet uh, yes. yeah, yeah yeah right there right there so at the center and then go up go yeah up this is there's oh yeah this is the center line just because of the pillar right uh, so there's a split, right? One wall is going this direction. The other wall is, is going in a different direction. So oh. everything that's on this wall, you know, the wall going one direction is, is going to, it can, the, the angle will eventually hit the horizon line. Eventually, yes. Eventually. Eventually. Right? But so far, it'll, far yeah, off. that's how you use the horizon line. The horizon line is that that is where the angle goes on this side and yeah. the wall going this way, everything is go, will hit the horizon line, will go to the horizon line on that side. Right. And you notice to, if yeah. you need to just do your angles and fit, cause I know what Leah was saying, like, I know that these lines are gonna go this way and these lines are gonna go that way, but I need to measure the angle. So I just did it with my pencil. I just hold my arm out and just, you know, I kind of like, I'm, I don't care if I look weird in public. I'm, I just don't care. So I hold my, I'm always doing this. I hold my brushes out for plain air. I'm always measuring. And that is how artists who work from life do it. All of them, every single one of them. And you can do it when you're in your photos too, because if you are measuring your angles and you just take your pencil, you have your angle and you just transfer that to your page, that's it. Although, although I think I might be describing that slightly incorrectly. When I look at the wall on the left side, everything's, it's not going to meet the horizon line. Yeah, right? it will eventually. It, it will? will. Mm -hmm. eventually. Even though everything's going up? No, nothing's going up. What do you mean? Which line? Like this, like that, like if you look at the bottom of the window, it's going up? No, it's not. It's going this way. Oh, got it. That window is going that way. Got it. That vanishing point is going that way. Okay. Yeah, that it's, helps. It's, it's all going that way. Yep. Yep. I gotcha. I gotcha. So we actually have two. Let me see if I can. Nope. I'm sorry. I just confused the direction. <laughs> yeah, it can. You ha that's why, that's why knowing the perspective or knowing how it works helps you to analyze the image because it is confusing, especially in a situation like this, where it's very complex visually, and you don't have, um, you have to make your own borders. So yeah, you have to know how it works so that it gives you a framework to understand what to look for, if that makes any sense. There is one more thing that I did, actually I do it in all the cathedral paintings to give us even more a sense of looking up. There are, um, in the pillars, there are segments where the marble meets marble because it's not just one piece of marble. You can see I've arrowed them off here. We're looking up at them. And the way I've curved that line up 
gives us an even greater sense of looking up. If we were looking down, they would be smiley faces, not frowny faces. Does that a make bit sense? Like tree branches. Uh, no, no, not like tree branches. A little so, like tree branches, tortoise, actually, but... because they, if they're coming towards you. Oh, if they're you, curving up, yeah. They are, it yeah. is like tree branches. <laughs> Good job. <Sandra. laughs> yeah, yes. Okay. I don't really think of that when I'm painting trees, but I'm not usually looking up at them the way yeah. I like really looking up at this. But yes, if you had a tree image where you were like really looking up into what? the canopy of the tree, then yeah. Like sure. bamboo. Yeah, uh, or like, ring. but but honestly, like if a tree branch is kind of coming towards you and off alter when you're looking even at a straight tree, there are some branches that are kind of moving yeah. up, and a way to show direction is that smiley face or the frowny face. Yeah, kind of depending on what direction it's going. It's going up if it's coming down. <laughs> yep, <laughs> away and from you. those are really subtle ways in which you can. Um, push the perspective to really give the optical illusion to your viewers. Just little things like that. So are there any questions on the cathedral? We can go to the next example. Are we good with the cathedral? Yeah. Cool. All right. So this one, this is Aphrodite. I painted her a little over a week ago. Uh, okay. She is in the Met and she, what, she is in two-point perspective. Again, I did not... Um, do a mechanical drawing where I measured out where are my vanishing points. I used my pencil and I held my arm out and I measured that nonsense. So um, where is my eye level in this? Where is it? I would say just under the knee. Under the knee, would, okay, do we have another uh, I guess? I would say it's more of a near the belly button. Okay, near the belly button, any other guesses? I would say me. Okay. It's, um, you're close. It's right here. Oh. And yeah. the reason I know it's there is because I looked at all the pedestals that were wow. around her and yeah. the ones that came flat on the top where I couldn't see above or below them. That was my eye level because it was exactly a straight line. Of course it is. Yes. It's exactly a straight line. So you can see it there. Yeah. This this mm -hmm. pedestal right here was my guide for, and I knew I was looking up mostly because um, I was sitting on a bench and the statue is higher up than me. She is at a bit of a funny angle because I'm looking up at her, but the statue itself, if you've ever seen this one at the Met, and if you haven't, you really should. She's amazing. Um, she's actually leaning over a little bit. So she's not standing straight up. She She is leaning forward um, above you know, her midline. So it's a bit of a funny angle. Um, so I drew her first and then you've got to put your model in context all the time. So I was just, again, for most of these angles, I knew how the perspective of the room is working. There is a mistake right here. This angle could be cleaned up a little bit more. Um, I did the floor last, so I was really tired by then. Um, uh, so that line, could be straightened up with this one. Um, but other than that, it's pretty accurate. This is another room over here. So it has a little bit of its own perspective, but it's still the same eye level. Um, pillars are straight because they're verticals and the floor is not in line with the pedestal because the pedestal is sitting at its angle. So it has its own vanishing points. And that's something else to know. The horizon line is always the same because the eye level doesn't change. You can't have two eye levels in a painting, but you can have different objects with their own vanishing points. So that's why the floor angles are different than the pedestal angles, okay? Any questions on Aphrodite? I just, if you guys want to test this, you can, at, if you're standing, I'm just here, standing back far enough from the computer that I can test all the angles to see do they go up to the vanishing point? By holding your arm, I'm holding a Sharpie right now, not a pencil, because that's the first straight thing I had. Sharpies work. And seeing, testing, notice that every single angle is different. So 
the angle yeah, on the bottom pedestal, the top of the bottom of the pedestal, and the bottom of the bottom of the pedestal, they're not parallel. None of them are parallel. They all, I think that's the thing that's the mind, that's the exhaustion mm-hmm. of yeah, perspective, yeah. is that nothing is the same. It's not like you can go, okay, I've got the bottom of the pedestal, now I have the top of that top pedestal. Everything is slightly angled differently. It, the angle changes as you kind of move up the drawing, right? Yeah, and, and this, is different. the other challenge with this one, and yes, I know this angle is a little bit wrong, so let's just pretend I got it right. Um, it's okay. Um, this is a very small area of a large room. And I know how to analyze that. I know that this room needs to be in two point perspective to give a bit of illusion of depth, even though I'm only in a very small area of that room. I'm only showing a little bit, but this is a huge room. So it's more a matter of knowing what to look for and how to measure the angles. So I'm not saying this is perfect, but it is good enough. And again, this is a three hour drawing on location from life. So, you know, there is also, you know, a loose factor there as well, but it still works. And that's the important thing. It works. It has a perspective structure. Mm -hmm. Okay. Any questions about Aphrodite? Okay. This is a painting I painted. Some of you were with me when I did it. And I was thinking of all of you when I painted it. And the reason I'm showing um, this is because I did something just for you guys. And I took a picture just for you guys about a really easy way to incorporate perspective into your landscapes. And this is something that we are gonna borrow from storyboard artists because they need to do uh, mock-ups all the time and they need to show space. And one thing that they do is what is called a perspective grid. So I started this painting and I did a little perspective grid because I have a couple of things going on here. I have a very simple composition. This is the Statue of Liberty on the water. It was a cloudy day. The clouds were in like these really amazing bands, but they go back in space. You can see it. My clouds up here are larger and my clouds down here are smaller and the spaces are narrower. The same thing with the water although it's a little bit harder to tell. And this is just an eight by 10 painting. So it's, it gets difficult to tell, especially you know when you're working so small. So it's a little bit in the water. That's why I have in the foreground, um, the sparkles on the water, they're larger, but my marks in the back here are much smaller. And I started out with this perspective grid so that I can have it in my mind, in my thinking process, in my construction, that I need to think about this. So you see the perspective is integrated into everything. It's not something that you think about once and then forget about. You, it's just like, I'm constantly thinking about it, but it's not, I don't really separate it out so much. I want it integrated into the structure. It's, it's like, you know, when people put walls in a house, that foundation structure is still there. They're building on that foundation. So as long as you're thinking about that first, you're gonna get a good sense of space in your paintings, okay? Any questions about uh, this particular example? And again, my eye level is right here. I put that as the first mark I make pretty much every single time I start a painting. I was gonna say, this is the most straightforward eye level example. And this is one point perspective. Yeah, yeah, so this is that. So, and can you turn back to the painting for just a second, Jessica? Can I, so I can just make one extra comment on this? Right, so there's the natural, or so there's the eye level, uh, which is where the sky meets, uh, well, I guess it's where the city meets the water, right? That's so that right. straight line is the eye right. level and the, the base level. of the city. There's also something in landscape perspective we like to think about called a natural horizon. In this case, it's not natural or the urban horizon, which is that purple, the top edge of the purple city right here. where uh, things pop off and up from the eye level horizon and they meet the sky. Right. But that um, is different than the eye level. That's different. So, so there's something right. called the natural line. And mm-hmm. then there's the eye level line. The eye you level line is that. most important. Yeah. And you can see that in room interiors as well, because mm-hmm. where your floor meets the wall, 
is usually not your eye level unless you're literally on the floor. So where you see, oh, let's think about a wooden floor, which I don't have a picture of, but if you think about a wooden floor, your floorboards are all going back towards a vanishing point, even if it's one point perspective, but your eye level is higher. So it's a little bit opposite because yeah, we have another line, but I don't necessarily, and Leah's correct, but I don't necessarily think about this as a horizon line. It's something that's above and I'm just measuring it from my subject matter of where it falls on my picture plane. So I know that I have this much space above the horizon. I stuck that there. There was this nice yellowy glow, um, but I had to be very careful because I didn't want to make this space. Now we're getting into a little tangent, but you don't want any two increments to be the same amount of space. So I was very careful to make this a little bit bigger. And this one is smaller. And you see my water is even still a different size. And then I have most of this painting is sky and cloud. And my focal point is right here or the whole statue really, but right there and then the whole statue. So it's a lot of thinking that goes on. But again, you do a little perspective grid and it will just like put everything in that framework for you. This is a painting that I did in Leah's class. It is from a video game screenshot. i uh, big fan of video gaming. Um, and I think more than half of the reason for that is the amazing landscape reference that you can get from it. So um, when I do screenshots from games, I actually approach it exactly the same way as if I was using a camera and taking it in my 3D world, my real 3D world instead of a virtual 3D world. Um, I'm looking for a focal point. I'm looking for a good composition. This is a very simple composition. Um, where's our eye level? This is an easy one. Where's the eye level? It's where the ground oh. ends. That's right. Yep, yes. right and I did draw a perspective grid when I started this painting and I didn't take a picture of it, so I can't show it to you. Um, and that's it. If you look at the lines in the ice right here, they are very, very deliberately showing the perspective. And it's one point perspective. So again, this is not complex. This is basic one point perspective in landscape. And you see, I've used like the lines in the ice to give that sense of going back in space. These lines are all going this way towards my focal point. These lines are all going this way and these are you know, different angles and my straight line is right there. It's very, very deliberate. And it gives a sense that this is really far away from us. Okay. And it did start with a perspective grid. Again, borrowing from storyboard artists who are really good at this kind of thing. Any questions on uh, this one? I have one more example to show you. This one I also did uh, in Leah's class. Oops, just wanna move it over. My layers panel is blocking it. Okay, some of you might remember um, this painting, this wave painting that I did in the pastel class. So first of all, where is my eye level? Where the water ends. That's right. The horizon. It's right there. Um, I did paint a perspective grid on this one as well because I do it a lot because it's cool and it's easy and it's fun and it keeps me thinking. And that's kind of what it looks like. Now, in the painting context, I'll keep the eye level there. Well, we don't have to. Look at, so my focal point is here. That's it. There's a secondary one here, but it's pretty much here in this area. Look at the sea foam on the sand. Very deliberately, look at the angles in it. And they're not like parallel to each other. This is not like a grid perspective that I have, but it's there, it's like underneath. So it doesn't look like it is, but the viewer knows this is going back in space. Can so, you lay your little, can you lay that grid down a second again? So no, yeah, that one. Can you guys see it? Can you mm -hmm. see it? It's there. So I have this shape right here, which is, you know, it's, we're coming a bit straight on at this point. You know, again, you're not like gridding a mechanical drawing, but it's there. Do you notice how I have, and of course, you know, there's how the foam naturally acts, 
but you see these lines are going in this way from here. I don't have any lines going this way on that side of the painting. You know what, sorry, I just moved. I should lock this layer. No, I won't move it accidentally. Um, Can you see? Yeah, look at how she's done that. See, there are I a have few no key lines. lines. Yep. And that's do, you, how you um, do you use Photoshop before you do something like this no. to get those lines? No. Where in your head? No, no she's them. measuring them. I, no, I don't even really. Well, there's. So, I just draw them. I literally put them on see the it? panel. I literally just paint them on in the underpainting. And then when I go to do the, the building up of the layers, I just um, I just work over it. So <laughs> notice, can I jump in here for a second? Cause yeah, I yeah. see exactly what you're saying. Can you go back to that other one? So notice where those lines, that those lines are like, see those lines. So she's leading everyone to her focal points. So you see all right. of her, those lines, those um, the lines that look like a road, right? like that are coming up to a point, they're all leading to the Statue of Liberty. Yes. So everything. So those are the important, she has made the decision. I am going to emphasize this thing by leading all the perspective there. That's correct. Yeah. That's so exactly it's correct. like a road, even though there isn't a road. And the only other thing I'll say is for people who are taking Marie's landscape class, she does this all the time too. You know how she's always giving you a road to lead you back to a point, the high level horizon. This is a similar concept. Um, she just look at how she sketched them in. Everything is leading in. to that focal point. Sorry, I got excited. No, that was great. That was perfect. But I'm just like, I felt like this was a good example to use because it's not something that you would normally look at and say it's a perspective drawing, but it actually is. And it's something I think about first. There is no point, there is no painting that I ever do that I don't incorporate perspective because that's how you get your 3D space. That's how our world is built. So this actually is a perspective drawing and this is how it's done. It's very deliberate, very deliberate. And it's all leading to my focal point. And this is not difficult perspective either. You're just putting rays off of your focal point. That's it's one point perspective. You can do a lot with one point perspective. So you don't really even have to know a whole lot about it. But if you can do this, then you can really start getting a sense of depth in your paintings that you um, might have been struggling with. Very easy to do. This takes you 30 seconds. It's just a perspective grid. That's it. And questions on the wave? It's not in your head. It's uh, except that you're making a decision about where you want to emphasize things. Once you decide where your, your point of focus is, then your perspective moves in that direction. In one point perspective. In one point perspective, yes. But that's what we're talking about here because it's easy and it's very accessible. And you can do a lot with it. It's not just let's draw a railroad track, uh, although it works for that. But you can use it in a seascape. You can use it in a landscape. Okay. And, and yeah. just to be just to be really clear, like I'll assume that when you were looking at the photograph of the wave, the foam might have been going directions contrary to what you just drew. Yeah, I changed it. Yeah. Yeah. Yes. Good. Yes. So this is a way we have to work because of Zoom. We do need to work with flat 2D perspective images a lot, but this is a way to take an image and enliven it and enliven it, right? And change it so that it follows more of the basic rules of perspective. Yes. The other if thing I want to say about it in this one in particular, this is a photo that I took. So when I took it, I was aware of the composition of it. Um, and I was also like, when I started painting this photo, I remembered the sense of space that I experienced when I took it. But that doesn't, you know, you can do that for any photograph, but you, you should just like think about yourself in the context of the environment and know that it goes back into space. And yes, I did, um, I didn't copy the shapes in the reference as much as I changed them because I want it to go back in space. It's a very deliberate decision. 
Does that blow your guys' mind? (laughs) They're all like, whoa. But it's easy. I think what I really want you guys to see from this is that this is a really easy thing to do. There is, this is not a magic trick. This, I mean, it is, but it's a really easy one. This is like. It's an art hack. (laughs) totally is like anybody can do this Rashmi uh, unmute yourself my dear and Rashmi, answer, did ask I your answer your question about the cathedral earlier yes you did okay uh, but my question is like you know in the um, in the cathedral uh, painting or in the statue of liberty painting you had an object where I mean uh, as an artist uh, you can decide that okay I want to put my focus on this not this one, the, the, sorry, the next one, the, the, the statue. Mm-hmm. Yeah. So I'm saying, but in the current picture we were discussing, mm-hmm. there you don't have an object as such. So how do you decide that this will be my focal point? I mean, great question. Yeah. That's a great question. And this is a composition question. Um, anytime you, you always need to have a focal point. That's like, what, do you, what is your painting about? What are you saying about it? Um, If you don't have something to say about it, why do it? You want to say something about it. Um, And in my case, I made a decision. This wave is my focal point. It's the most interesting part. It's the impact point. It's a physical impact. That water is physically impacting. The power of the painting is focused in this area. And I just used a basic rule of thirds where you just do a tic-tac-toe board on your painting and you choose one of your intersecting corners here, 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 here. But I actually made this decision about the focal point when I took my photo reference. Um, And then when I was looking through my references, um, I already knew, okay, that, well, that's my focal point. It's right here. I want my viewer to go here. This is also um, the point of highest contrast. It's right Mm -hmm. here. This white area, let me take the grid off. Right here, you see? That is the point of most contrast against the dark. So a, another like little hack, which is a little bit off topic of perspective is your focal point is where your darkest dark and your lightest light meet. And you want that to be placed in a good visual area. But also if you look at the, the line of um, where your viewer goes, they're never coming to the edge of the painting. They come in here at secondary they're here, that's the focal point. They come down here, they might come around here. Maybe they go here and then they're led back into the painting. And then they come over here and then they're not trapped here. This is very, they come down here, they catch a line here and they're coming back. So there's a real dynamic movement around the painting. Do you guys get what she's saying? We talk a lot about, I I talk about this in a different way, but I really like this presentation. It's about paying attention to edges. Edges are where people go, right? So now, right, and so we get the most detail where the edges are the strongest, where there's the greatest deal of contrast. And as things come closer to you, you tend to give more detail to them than if they're farther away. But then look at how every single, the the decision that Jessica is then making is that every single element of her painting is pointing in that direction, is pointing, is directionally moving you, using perspective. It's directionally moving you. there, you, there are compositions you will see w- which don't work where you're kind of led that way and then off the yeah. <laughs> that page, right? Bad. So, Bad. yeah. Does that make sense? It's a, it's a kind of a sophisticated, it's a nuanced concept. You'll get it more as you start to work more. You'll start to feel, oh yeah, I'm kind of direct. Everything I'm doing is directing. I'm actually controlling this image much more. And this is why people will look at a painting a lot longer than they'll look at a photograph. Yeah, and this is where yeah. studying painting, specifically studying painting, um, gives you the ability to work with a reference photo to make a good painting. Because um, more often than not, in my opinion, a straightforward photo, especially if it's not yours and you've uh, and the reason I'm saying that is because you you are not the person who made decisions about the composition, especially if it's somebody else's. 
it might be a good composition, but it, it might not be. And if it's not, but you still want to paint it, you need to know how to work it into being a good composition for a painting because painting aesthetics are different. They're different. Uh, yeah. Any other- Very well said. <laughs> are there any other questions or comments on um, our wave? Because then we have some problem solving to do where let's go back to, um, back to our deck. All right, I'm going to show you easy cheat way to put all objects in perspective. This works for everything. It's easy, it's cheap. Just draw a cube or square around it in perspective. That's it. That's all you have to do. We're going to look at finding the midpoint, rounding the edges. It, it works for everything, especially things that have their own vanishing points on the same horizon. Just draw a square around it. So um, let's, I forgot what- Any choice, please? Yeah, Take I'm gonna show three. you. Yeah, yeah, I'm gonna show you. I just forgot if I have a new slide. Um, okay, I do actually. So we're gonna talk about dealing with ellipses in a one point perspective. I'm specifically saying one point perspective, um, which is fine. It's fine for our purposes. The first thing you do, and I will show you this, is we're gonna draw the horizon line Again, that is what? Establishing your eye level. You decide where your eye level is or you analyze where your eye level is, you mark it down. You draw a square in perspective where your cylinder should be on the page. Find your midpoints, round the edges. Oh, kitty, he agrees, you see? <laughs> cats, cats know all about perspective, they do. So let's jump back into Photoshop and um, let's have a look. Let's have a look at how to deal with ellipses. Where did Photoshop go? Here we go. Okay, we should all be back in Photoshop together. Um, I have three examples I'm going to show you. The first one is a painting that I did. This is a little still life. Uh, I painted it in November and it was done from life. Okay, so I had a quail egg. This little mirror, this is it. See, it's a little. Well, I stuck it on top of a box on my drawing table and I painted it. So what was the first thing I asked myself? When I have this little ridiculous little setup on my drawing table, I have a quail egg stuck with wax from, you know, those little wax cheeses on a little mirror on my drawing table. So you ask yourself you where the horizon, where is the eye level? Are you and it's right? the mirror, no? The mirror is going to be, the mirror surface has to be the center point like where your is horizon. It? Where is my horizon line? Where is it? Where, where the, the egg and the mirror The mirror meet. surface. That is incorrect. Yeah. No, interesting. Oh, I know. It's where the halfway point of the mirror is, right? That is incorrect. No? Okay. Nope. So it's the <laughs> table. Yeah. Oh. Yeah. Oh, right. Oh. right, of course. I also have the added benefit of knowing exactly where it is because I know where I physically was in relation to the egg and the mirror. My head was above it. So, so my eye level is gonna be above it. Um, but I did that on purpose because it's a composition issue. And I'm showing this thing that I wanna show it in a certain way. So I could have, and I did actually, I elevated the mirror with the egg on it to be at this height to make a good painting because it leads right into the quail egg, which we have this very hard, I'm showing you with my pencil, not the mouse. We have this very hard edge that leads us right back into it. So we don't get lost off the page, but my horizon line is up there. So then I said to myself, I have a circular mirror. This mirror is a circle, but if I hold it in perspective, can you guys see that? Is it a circle? I'm probably not holding it straight. This is hard. This is really hard. Okay, no. can you see that? No, not really, because the focus is on Photoshop, so. Oh, is it? Oh, 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 I'm sharing my screen. I forgot, sorry guys. Um, I forgot you can't see me. Okay, so I have a circular mirror. It's a perfect circle. And I need to draw it in perspective because 
it's not going to look like a circle in my painting. It's going to look like an ellipse because it is an ellipse. When you put a circle back in space, it's an ellipse. And I said to myself, well, it's got to be correct. So I know how to do that. I decided, I made a decision where this is going to sit on my page. I made a decision about that. So I drew two rays from my, my one vanishing point, which I made a decision about. You can see it's also the midpoint of the egg and it's also the midpoint of the mirror. That's very important. You want it to be the midpoint. It's where our geometry comes in. I drew two lines to make this area, this uh, square in perspective, right? Then I found the midpoint, drew lines, and then you connect the edges. And that is how you draw a circle in perspective. It's very easy. And it's correct. And you, you couldn't do one to show us now, could you? Yeah. I certainly can. Thank See, you. Leah, this is why I wanted the iPad. Okay. Hold, give me, give me a second because I have to switch devices. Oh, can you guys see me? This is the mirror. So I want to show you. Let me show you quickly. This this mirror is the one in the painting, and it's a circle, right? Can you all you can all see it? It's yep. yep. When we put it back in space, I'm trying to get where it's not reflecting. Where it's reflecting. You see how it's um no longer a circle. It's elongated. Yes. Exactly. It's going to go back in space, right? This helpful? Are you guys learning something? So yes. this is very, this is connected to. I've described this in a different way as we've been working with coffee cups. So and That's Jessica's going to go gonna over those that. next. We're look at that. So actually, let's do that before we switch to the iPad. Yeah, let's do that first. Actually, that's a good idea. Um, let's go back to Photoshop. So that's how I thought about this painting. I literally just figured out where I wanted it to be on the page. I drew this square in perspective. I found the midpoints and then I drew my line here and I connected here, 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 uh, and here. And that's how you know that your circle is in perspective. So actually that brings us to the next example, which should look familiar to many of you. <laughs> <Yes>. <laughs> um, there is one tricksy thing in this photo what is it that will distract you if the you don't. ear nope it's we're looking down right at here. it nope it's this line right here this is such oh, right, a right 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 yes you have to completely ignore it it has nothing to do with the perspective at all it's just a shadow line it's a great line for a uh, good interest, but it has nothing to do with the perspective. So don't let a sharp shadow like this throw you off because it's not part of the perspective. So what's the first thing we ask ourselves? Where, the horizon is, line. where is it? Where the table meets the wall? No, we don't have. Oh, so here. this is the photograph. This is where yeah. the photograph ends. We don't have in our reference where the table meets the wall. We don't have that. Uh, we don't have that information. No, gonna... So where is it? This is a tricky one because it's off the page. So it where... must be higher up. That's correct. Yeah. Yeah. Oh, because wait, that's the wrong the layer. Oh, let me drag that down. It's right there. It's high. It's high. Because yeah. right everything's here. going right. It's here. Right. So, you know, if you can't quite tell where it is, that's actually why I had these layers in a different order. An easy way to figure it out would be to take this photo and either, you know, take two pencils and, and make two rays or draw your horizontals because you know where those are. That's like a known thing is where your horizontals are. So you do that and then draw rays up. And where they meet is going to be your horizon. So we're correct. Oh, that's cool. It's, yeah, yeah. So um, it is above us. But if you really are kind of stuck right. on it, just again go through this process. You say you ask yourself, "Where is my horizon?" Well, I know I'm looking up, or I'm looking down at it. I'm up. I'm up, up above it. I'm looking down. 
but let me figure it out. Where is it exactly? And again, I'm making a decision where on my page I want this. And I know from my photo reference, it's, it's taking up mostly like the right-ish, center-ish, not quite center-ish area. And just draw your rays up, horizon line, find your midpoint, make sure it lines up, and then you draw your circle in perspective. I would never, ever, ever attempt to draw a circle in perspective without doing this. I would never do it because eyeballing it 100% of the time will never work. It will be wrong. Yeah. 100% of the time. Don't try and guess this. And you don't need to guess it because this is so easy to do. This takes a minute. Well, yes. and we all know how to draw that road, right? We all know exactly. how to draw that road. You so if you on. can insert, right, we learned how to draw that road when we were little kids. So if you can insert that, I'll try to do this in our lessons from now on. I'll try to insert that um, perspective so you can see it. Um, uh, that road, just in, in encapsulate your circle in that road. Right? Yeah, you want we to know draw how that works. We know it works. So right. you always we draw a sphere in perspective by drawing a square around it. And if you have a 3D thing like a tree, just draw a cube around it and then you just fill in your edges. Show us what, please. Oh, you uh, do. A I can. Yeah, give me a second. I will, but um, let me show you our second coffee cup, which many of you may recognize. Let's just go through <laughs> this one one more time and then I'll do a tree for you. Okay. Does this look familiar to us? Mm, yes, let's so. Yes, it does. Um, where, what is our first question? The horizon, our, horizon line. line. Where is it? It's, uh, it's the just thing. above the cup between the edge and the cup. Mm -hmm. But it's lower than in the other reference, right? Yes. Well, let's check it out. Let's make sure. Right. Draw some horizontals, right? We know in our area, we're making a decision on our picture plane of where we want this, um, this ellipse to be. So let's just draw some rays up. So now we have a square in perspective. Ooh. And look at that. Look at where our horizon line is. It's right there. OK, I'm going to try to remember to do this. Find the midpoint. <laughs> We have our center line, which needs to be, it, this always is a center line, always. You can't have this line over here and your ellipse is here. It must be perfect center. Here we go, we got a midpoint. Now we have all of our lines to draw our ellipse here, 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 and here. That's it. Those are the little points and then we draw it. This is again, one point perspective. Um, I'm just going to mention this just for sake of information and that you know it's a thing. If you were doing this in two point perspective, instead of a square, you would have a diamond shape instead of a trapezoid. This is a trapezoid. But it would be if you flipped this square up like towards us so that it was on a plane, um, a vertical plane parallel to us, to our faces, um, it would be a perfect square. If this was in two point perspective, it would be a diamond shape. Does that make sense? Yeah. But for your purposes, just use one point perspective. This is easy. This is not hard stuff and anybody can do it. Again, all you have to do, I'm just gonna go through it for you one more time, right? We have our photo reference. We're gonna make a decision about where this is. We ask ourselves, where is my eye level? We know it's above. But let's find it exactly. Draw your horizontals. Make your square. There's your mid, uh, your horizon line. Find your midpoints. You've got your dots of where your ellipse goes, and there you go. You can do this for the bottom as well. And it's probably a good idea to do it for the bottom as well, especially if you know, like we have our horizontals um, defined here. Um, so you actually already know where your midpoint is. You could do it or not, or you could just guess this angle. If you were doing um, a see-through glass, you would wanna do this for both circles. This one, it doesn't matter so much because um, you could very easily just work out this angle without doing it in perspective. But if you were working with glass and you were seeing the bottom of the glass, the circle here, 
you would want to um, bring it up to this same midpoint and then you would have your circle in perspective. Does that make sense? Yep. Yeah. Cool. Any questions? Can you see that that yellow point is the halfway line, right? Yes. Like yeah. if you were looking over the top of the cup, that that yellow line would be exactly halfway through the cup. That's right. Yeah. That's right. This one. Leah's so that helps. Right yes. Here. This all. So this perspective also. So I've been kind of showing you in a guessy way. <laughs> <laughs> what the halfway oh, yes. point is. Uh, no generally, reason, yeah. you can see it, but I mean, well, I mean, without the actual structure, but this is a way for you to find that halfway point. It's where those two blue lines cross in the middle. You, you actually have, I mean, you put the pen on top of it or to show the halfway. I've point, been showing but, it, but yeah. I've been guessing, right? I, I what I'm, what I'm saying is I, I am, I've been doing this long enough to be able to kind of look and see where the, the um, cup turns back, right? I can see where the cup turns back, but this is a much easier, more systematic way of finding out where the cup turns back, where you don't have to guess, guess so much, right? It's hard when you don't like, when you can't see it, you'll get to the point where you'll be able to see it. These grid lines won't be in your head exactly, but they're gonna, they're directionally showing you where the turn happens on a curved sub sub surface. Yeah, very nice. I'll, I'll be using this. <laughs> All right, so uh, Sandra had a question about trees. So I'm gonna stop sharing um, and we're gonna go to the iPad. So just give me a second. Okay. Oh, I don't want audio. It's going to be off. Hold on. Okay. Okay. Can you all see my iPad? Yes. Okay. So, actually, let me just. All right, so Sandra had a question about um, cubes on trees. Right? Let's say we have our picture plane and we're gonna put our horizon right there, right? We have a tree, let's say it's Again, I'm just gonna do, let's say the tree's vanishing point, we can do it over here. And the tree is above us, right? Right, so we have a cube and I know I can fit my tree in to the perspective there. And we can see it because this part might go back in space a little bit. This gets even more interesting, more interesting if you have more than one tree. Actually, let me just do another layer. How do you know to put the vanishing point there? I just made a guess. I just made it up. It depends on your reference. I'm just- Do you need to know where it is in order to make the cube? Yeah, it's gonna be somewhere on your horizon. Okay. Now, if you have, Leah, you're on mute. Leah. Mm -hmm. It's where the two points meet together on the horizon. But which two points? Because there's the nothing points enough. of the side of the tree. So I think the issue you're having, and I want you to really pay attention to this, is that there, even though it does not look like the tree has different sides, it does, like a cube, right? There are there is the side that's in front of us. And then there is the branches and the part of the tree. If Because if you were to look at the tree from above, you'd see there were sides, right? Well, you could make it anywhere behind. Yeah. So you see, in a practical context, 
I might make the front of this tree right here, that line right there, this side. This part might be lower at an angle than this one, okay? So landscape perspective with trees, a single tree, um, you can use it, especially like in the back of the tree especially for your thinking process. Because I guarantee if you're thinking about it, it's gonna come out in your painting in some way. But where it gets really interesting is in rows of trees. So let's say, you know what, I should just. My undoing, okay. You have, let's say a row of trees, right? This is our, this is our VP right here. If you have, you need to know the spacing. So this is where we're getting a little bit more, this is why you should buy the book because it's gonna talk about spacing and where to lay your trees. And the way to do that is finding midpoints in squares. Um, for like fence posts going back or trees going back. For one something tree- Something with a regular, something yeah. where everything is evenly spaced. I actually don't want to get into that right now. Yeah, let's not get into that. That's a um, Because it's a little bit too much, but for, yeah, that's, that's a little bit more advanced. But if you want to just go draw a cube around it. I know my vanishing point is right there. I have my happy tree here, but you see I'm in the constraints of of that um, cube. You can usually see that there's a side, like just like we can usually identify the lights coming from the right or the left. You can usually see a place in the tree where there's a light to a dark shift. That's right. So and that is be... often where the side is, like where the side of the tree is. Yep, exactly. So you can see, you guys can see really clearly here what she's doing. What direction is the light coming from? What direction the is the light. light coming from? The right, right? right? So the side of the tree is kind of where that left, right, can you draw, Jessica, then can you draw the, the uh, rectangle around it to show the, the cube around it to show them? Yep, no, see I should that? Do it in a different color, hold on. Yeah. So usually there's a, a pretty major shift in light to show you where the side is. Got that? Yes. Does that make sense? Super mm -hmm. A little bit more sense. Yes. So that's the sides of things. That's another reason we pay so much attention to edges where a light edge meets a dark edge. Because that's usually where the directions are shifting. Right, so if we had we have our tree, and you know, trees are not like really Sometimes. regular shapes in nature, right? So we have our tree, right? We have right, mm -hmm. and we have our horizon line. It's green. Right, because it is. We have our purple bounding box around our tree. Maybe our it's going to be over there. The VP is off there. Right. Okay. Let's go through that tree so we know. Oops, that's bad drawing. There we that's go. Close enough. Okay. So we're down here, let's see, that's our cube. This is awesome. That's the bounding box. It's in perspective properly, right? And we have our light source. We know where it is. It's right here, right? It's our tree. And then we have light tree. I don't think it's 
Let's reach out. That's better. Huh? But notice, you know, if you really want to um, make it, you know, copy ah, it like that. Nice. <laughs> so, you guys, when we're, I guess what all of this is saying is that when you're constructing a drawing or a painting, you're kind of breaking it up in ways that don't feel like they exactly fit with the pieces as you see them. Right, we like to think of things as leaves, trunk, branches. But some of those, what we have to think about is less those things and more about uh, where does this object turn? Where are the shifts, right? Where are the shifts in light to dark? Um, what's in that shift? So how do you deal with the different elements? Very nice, Jessica. And then if we want to get, it's like there's a tree behind it. We can yeah. see. Again. You see, they're back in space. Same light source. Pardon my crude drawings. No, it's perfect. I have done exactly something like this in my ninth grade science project. This reminds me of my physics <laughs> class. It where should. we were doing a session on light, exactly the same thing. We would do, we had put things in a cube and we were just showing how light passes through and shadows are formed. I mean, this is just So amazing. this is physics. <laughs> this is basically physics and light. This is just that's science. a good te that's a good physics teacher. I'm I bet telling they were you guys, an artist. <laughs> once you get how this works, you will have so much fun with it then you can really start making things your own. Yeah. Yep. All right. What else you got? Do you have anything else for us, Jessica? Or is this the point where questions oh, are? Um, this is, I just have, let me figure out how to come back to Zoom so I can stop sharing. Stop share. All right, so now we're back with me on camera, right? Let's yes. yes. Um, you are so tech savvy. <laughs> Let me come back to our PowerPoint quickly. Um, but that's so cool. You can just use it in real life. And, yeah. Yeah. And you don't have a picture. And, yeah. And that, yes. Exactly. So let's talk about what's next. Can you all see the deck? Yeah. Okay, cool. So I really recommend, this is just meant for a starting point and some practical things that you can take into your next painting, like things that you can actually do. I, I, I always like to give people like actual tasks that you can do right now that are very accessible to you. So I hope that you have gotten that from this, but it's really meant to be a starting point um, I recommend the two books, Perspective Made Easy and How to Draw Comics the Marvel Way. There are tons and tons and tons of good tutorials on YouTube. Um, I don't have specific YouTube ones, but I did pull out two videos from storyboarding for you, which is about perspective gridding. They're short, they're easy to follow. One is on one point perspective gridding and the other one is two point perspective gridding. Um, so you'll have these links, we'll send the deck around. Um, practice drawing every single day and have fun. This stuff is fun. Once you flip over into like a basic understanding of how to structure things and get away from, oh my God, I'm gonna die. You don't have a lot of fun with this and you'll be able to have more versatility and fluency as an artist. You know, you'll be able to do this from life. You can do it from photos. And if you wanna draw from your imagination, you can. Um, all this, it applies to all of it. Uh, so um, that being said, are there any more questions, comments, anything? 
So this was really useful reminders. Well, good. I'm glad. So uh, I just want to thank everyone um, for joining today. Thank you to Leah for letting me geek out about this stuff. Um, and you know, you can you can always reach out to me. My uh, website, my Instagram is there. Or you can, I mean, Leah knows how to get in contact with me too. So you can always do that. You're I'm always in class. class. I'm, I'm around, I'm easy to find. Um, but I also like, you know, I wanna thank all of you for being here, but I also think it's really important that you thank yourselves for being here because this is like, if you're, giving yourself that time and opportunity to invest in yourself creativity, creatively and your own inner artist. This stuff is really important. And um, be proud of yourselves and, and happy with yourselves that you've carved out time to learn more because it's continuous learning process. I still am learning stuff. I still refer back to my books and tutorials to see, hey, what's going on? Uh, you know, it's, it never ends. And, you know, thank yourselves for investing time in yourselves. So right. with that, um, I have nothing else for today. And I just, again, want to say thanks to all of you and thank you to Leah. Yeah. Thank you so much, Jessica. You're it's welcome. interesting, right? Yeah. And if you're feeling a little overwhelmed also, that's okay. This is another thing you need to incorporate. Essentially, what our art life lessons are doing for you is showing you how much you have to learn, right? How much you have to incorporate into each thing. The more I learn, the more I realize I don't know anything. I don't know anything. It's like, <laughs> it makes me like sometimes want to just go take a nap and hide from everything, but it, 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 yeah, but don't, don't feel overwhelmed. Remember, yeah. these are simple steps. Uh, we're always happy to go over them with you. You'll have a recording of this. You'll have the deck. Um, you know, it's, it's okay. And it is accessible to all of you. All of yeah. you can do this. Yes. Yes. I don't mean overwhelming. Like it's, it's, it's particularly hard. I mean, it's another thing you need to layer in another on thing. top it, of what you're painting thinking Painting is overwhelming though. It is overwhelming. Yeah. It really is. You're creating a world. You are. <laughs> You're creating a um, world which and is frustrating at the same time. Yes, mm -hmm. it, it is. And it always will be. Yeah. So that's just part of it. Yeah. Yeah. Cool. All right, you guys. We'll see you all on, uh, most of you on Friday, some of yep. you on Wednesday and Thursday. And we are running this class again tonight at 6 p.m. New York time. So if you want to come back for a second dose of friendly perspective. Come on back. Yeah, will you be sharing this presentation with us? Yeah, it's going to be on the YouTube link. I'll, YouTube, oh. I'll put it on as soon as it's done here. Oh, I wanted to let you guys know, by the way, that um, we, here, hold on, I'm going to stop the recording here.